This is my 2019 Yellowfin CE that I've got for sale, a fully loaded outfit with Simrad Electronics, Altera, Minn Kota trolling motor, Meritrail trailer, a 350 Verado, and a number of other options. This is the Simrad NSO Evo 3 19 inch display. Um, let's take a listen to the audio system. It's a JL audio system that's on board that's controlled with this unit. So as you can tell, it gets quite loud. Uh, the system is quite powerful and offers a lot of volume if you need it. I only went halfway on that volume control. The different things that are uh, available on this NSO in the SimRad system as a whole, I've got charts, the echo sounder, which has a B61 transducer, and then side scan, down scan has the structure scan module so that you can see the uh, both from a side scan and so forth. I've got it paused because I'm out of the water, but that's um, available on the unit itself. If we take a look at the radar, this has a 4G radar unit on it and it can support radar by itself. You can put it in an overlay on the charts so you can see the actual chart underneath it. So there's a lot of different options available. It does have the nav there, but it doesn't have autopilot, so not really a lot of availability or options rather there. The instrument system is uh, gives you the different instrument information and then the engine data points. This is the C-Zone information. So C-Zone is an electronic switching system that Yellowfin uses to control all the different devices with electronics, lights, and so forth. If you tap on the control monitor section, it allows you to go into all the different items and control individually from the pumps to lighting and vessel uh, items, the anchor lights, bow, uh, the uh, nav lights, all that kind of stuff is available in here. And then this is just pointing out the you can turn on all your electronics or you can turn the electronics and the lights on with these quick buttons. So this is the 9 inch Mercury display which is actually a Simrad NSS 9 inch display that has full functionality of all the different Simrad screens. So you could run your radar on there or chart or sonar or you could run the Mercury vessel view to be able to see all the information coming out of the engine. With the throttle, several buttons, the dock button changes sensitivity, makes it easier when you're docking that when the throttle's moving forward, the knot is sensitive. Transfer allows you to move up and down between the upper and lower station. Throttle only is just that for throttle. You can also control the engine through the display with the function there to look at setting the speed for trolling or cruise control. It does have active trim there, but it's not enabled on this particular mode. It's a module that you could add for an upgrade later if you chose to. This is the trim setting for the jack plate. It has a Bob's jack plate on there, and then the power poles. It's got twin 10 foot blade power poles. And I'm pushing the button to go down, and then we'll stop it and bring it back up for you. They work really well. The dual power poles really help you hold your position when you've got winds and currents and so forth. Uh, this switch is for the 20 inch rigid uh, light bar. As you can see here, it's quite bright. It's really nice at night because it lights up the whole area and allows you to see everything from, you know, if you're running on the coast, pot buoys and things of that nature. There is another switch at the top for that, so if you're driving from up above, you can control the light on and off. And then the Simrad uh, radio is up there. And this is the Ocean Grip helm pads that I had. This one's for the upper station when you're standing on it, which is very comfortable for running, but it's also comfortable for when you're getting up and down, you're kneeling down. And this is the one, the helm pad with the elephant logo. And then they've got another smaller pad on the uh, foot rest there when you're sitting on the seat and you're leaning. Subwoofers, two subwoofers with the JL audio system on board. There are six speakers. There's one on the port side here. There's two up above on the hard top. But there's also LEDs up there called map lights. And then another speaker on this side and then two up front. The map lights are nice. There's three colors. There's white, red, and blue. Just by cycling the power on and off, it changes those colors and makes it really nice for ambient lighting. This is the upper helm station there, and then we've got underneath here the center console. The Everything's really well, you know, well uh, marked internally so you know what you're connecting on all that little bar there on the NEMA 2000 bar. That's the back of that NSO unit and the subwoofers. 
so this unit does have the teak inlay uh, as well uh, down underneath the equipment here and this life-saving equipment that's there the system internally we've got the power pole hydraulic pumps uh, one for the port and one for the starboard side on the other side over here the batteries one's the house battery one's the starter battery they're fully charged through the charger that's up forward that controls the trolling motor batteries it controls it uh, rather charges them and then also charges these at the same time everything's pretty well marked inside which is really nice this is the fusion system with the satellite radio module uh, that you can get satellite radio if you subscribe this is part of the C zone system and then down below here it's kind of hard to see in the light but that is another part of the C zone where it makes it, it, it they're clearly marked as to what the items are so it makes it simple to add things on this side, more of the equipment for the Simrad system and the more season electrical connectors and so forth. So that just, you can tell that the wiring is all done very well uh, as you expect from Yellowfin. This is the forward compartment of the, in the center of the unit. You can see with all my stuff in it, it holds quite a bit of things, if you will, or junk and it's got the led light it's got a blue led light in the forward or i guess the aft part of that section uh, that's a particular large tackle bag i've got two other tackle bags and a pretty decent size plastic box or tub rather that i've got a bunch of stuff into it and there's even stuff up behind that too on the starboard side here this one you can see it goes all the way forward from a storage perspective there's a light in it and then this is the rod holder on this side there's only one on the port side due to the fact that the um, has the fuel system on it I can put two rods with the smaller eyelets on it this one has two on the port side you can see on the smaller eyelets on the bottom those are like uh, bait casting rods I can put three on the top I can only put two because the larger eyelets prevent me from putting more in there and that also has the light and you can see how far it goes up under underneath there in that particular compartment when i take off the covers if i'm traveling i can put them all in here in that compartment i'll take out the rods and it'll fit all the covers which makes it really nice otherwise if when i'm here at this at home dock i take all that and put it out just to see what all the inf stuff i had up front this is all the stuff that was in that center console underneath here is the battery compartment for the trolling motor. So these are the three trolling motors. They are the Odyssey PC-1200s. They're a little bit heavier um, amp hours, uh, stronger amp hours, but they're also very light, which is great from a weight balance perspective and the weight up in the forward part. And this is the Minn Kota Precision MK44 charger. So it has this charging uh, lead goes back to that house battery and starter battery. And then those leads, the three of them go up to the each battery up there to charge those. The outlet for that charger is up forward in the anchor locker is where that um, connection is. Moving up to the upper helm station, this is the Simrad GS25 antenna. And then next to it is the Galaxy Sirius XM satellite radio antenna that ties into that module down below we saw earlier. This is the Simrad NSS 12 inch Evo 3 display. It has the same functionality as the other 19 inch display with all the different access to the equipment. The Mercury controls has the same functionality and then the transfer button is how you transfer up to the top and bottom. Power pole controls, the jack plate control, and then each of the wheels, both upper and lower, have the tilt ability with a knob on each of the wheels to make it easier to hold on to. The helm seat up here is called a sleigh seat. It has the backrest, makes it really comfortable to sit. There's a rod holder to each side, as well as cup holder. And then down below, uh, there's a actual footrest too that you can put your foot up and make it real comfortable for long rides sitting up there. This is the Simrad 4G HD uh, radar with the sea view mount, which has the also the antenna, or the anchor light rather, and then a VHF antenna. The other thing to note is you can see that the top of the roof has some texture to it, which makes it great for standing up there. This is where you can mount the taco or other brand outriggers. And then the rod holders are actually slotted for the spinning rods, which makes them more secure when you're running long distances. 
The unit itself or the outboard has about 58 hours as you can see here on the outboard. And then this is just some pictures of the different equipment, the Simrad radio, which is right there at the underneath that upper console section. And then the map lights that are here, they have three different colors as noted before. And this is the underside of where that outrigger mount is, makes it very easy. On each side of the console, there's a USB and a cigarette lighter or 12 volt adapter connection, which makes it handy for charging phones and so forth. Up forward, this is a custom forward live well with a see-through plexiglass that's lit. Again, this is the center compartment up there on the forward deck, and you'll notice that there's a very heavy rubber mat type of uh, material across the, the entire lid, which really helps to seal out water and keep the things dry on all three of those compartments. As well, there's a really deep trough that goes around each one of those compartments so that it routes the water away. And underneath that center is where the battery and the chargers are. Again, these are the batteries for the trolling motors. The charging outlet for this is located up in the anchor locker, as you can see here in this picture. Right to the right there, you can see the plug plugged into it. Also on board on port and starboard in the aft section of the cockpit are 12 volt outlets that you can plug in things like downriggers or electric reels. So there's one on each side of the boat. As indicated in the ad, there is a Minn Kota Altera Riptide, which is that self-deploying trolling motor. Minn Kota also offers an optional antenna, which is this unit here that helps with the pinpoint accuracy, so it holds the anchor position much better. Moving to the aft part of the boat, there are three compartments. There's two compartments, one on each side, that are plumbed for live wells, as you can see. And then there's a third center one that's a more of a primary live well, and it also can be pressurized with that sliding lid. The backrest can be removed. It has rod holder spots there that you can use for rods. And then underneath the seat is where the mechanicals and through holes are. And it also has a valve uh, that you can see here that is used to rotate so the flow of water from one, you know, depending on which live well you're trying to control. The leaning post has four rod holders again with the spinning rod slots. And then underneath the seat itself, which has got custom upgraded upholstery on it, has the slots in here that will hold Plano boxes or just gear in general. The underwater lighting for the boat, there's two facing aft and two in the midships facing downward, which you can see photos of here. Uh, this is from the stern and then I've got another one coming up from the side that you can see how well it lights things up at night. It's, it's very bright, which is really nice. And then courtesy lights on either side of the console light up the deck area along with those map lights that you saw earlier. The motor again is the Mercury Verado 350, 58 hours on the engine, 20 hour service was completed, has the Bob's jack plate which gives you 6 inch lift which I believe it's about 7.5 because they do have an extra lift on the uh, when it's mounted in there. Again the, just some additional pictures of the vessel from different angles from up above there at that second station. That step, another view of the instep live well which is a custom upgrade and then the helm station itself. And that's that picture of that footrest I was mentioning earlier, where you can set your feet at while you're driving from the upper. There are two rod holders on each gunnel on port and starboard, along with these two up forward, which is nice because you can actually take that backrest and plug it in up there if you want to use the aft section for rod holders. And then there's four on either side of the uh, console itself. This is that rigid, unit, uh, the 20 inch bar, and then the, that's a, one of the nav lights that's mounted there on the upper station. So there's no additional lighting things that you have to do when you turn your nav lights on. They're already pre-mounted in. There's no plug-in. Uh, on some of the boats, you have to plug them up front. As you can see on the side, it's quite shiny. This is a, I just had the whole hull ceramic waxed, so it repels the water really, really well won't have to do anything for another about three years is what they say depending on how much sun it gets and these are some pictures as well of the custom covers there's one up there on the front of the station over the where the steering section is and it covers that light and the other one covers the seat up there and then these cover the each of the console and the leaning post and the motor I do have a fourth one that's coming that's going to cover the rear seat and backrest as well so all the upholstery would be covered
So those are the features on board the 2019 24CE boat. If you have any other questions, feel free to give me a call. Thanks again. Have a great day.